This is the new Santa Cruz Nomad for 2021. Now previously the fourth generation of the bike saw the shock move lower into the frame and it was then driven by the lower of the two co-rotating links. Obviously as you can see it's quite similar in terms of layout um, but if you do dig a little deeper there's some subtle changes that will make a difference on the trail. The model you can see here today is the CC, so that's the more expensive carbon from Santa Cruz, uh, X01 RSV or reserve build, which costs £7,799. I'm going to talk to you first about the frame and the suspension, then I'll get onto the geometry of the bike, then the build of this particular bike, and then finally we'll get onto how it actually rides on the trail. As you can probably see, the fifth generation of the Nomad is still built around 650B wheels. Now Santa Cruz are still sticking by the fact that the smaller wheels are simply more versatile and fun than the big equivalent 29 inch wheels. The fifth generation Nomad still uses 170mm of travel at the rear and that's matched with 170mm fork at the front. The back end of the bike still uses the VPP or virtual pivot point platform to control that. But for 2021, Santa Cruz have refined how that travel is controlled. Those changes to the rear end of the bike include a lowering of the leverage ratio and switching to a longer stroke shock, which Santa Cruz claim should give a more settled and damped feel, which will be better for tackling really rough descents. They've also increased the progression right at the end of the travel, so the new Nomad should be better at dealing with those really heavy hits or nasty landings that you may encounter. To keep this lovely frame in pristine working order, Santa Cruz have also included lots of nice integrated rubberized protection. So if you look closely at the chain stay, you can see that there's a guard down there to keep that chain slap at bay and keep the bike nice and quiet. And there's also the shuttle guard which they use. So that's uh, part way down on the underside of the down tube. And that's for anyone that uses, uh, say like a pickup truck to shuttle their bikes up to the top of the hill. So hanging over the back of the tailgate and you've got a bit of protection just down here to help ward off any damage. Currently, Santa Cruz are only offering this bike in either the Carbon C or the Carbon CC. So the Carbon C is the slightly cheaper, heavier carbon, which Santa Cruz still say is just as strong as the pricier CC version. There isn't an alloy model available just yet, but Generally speaking, as we've seen in the past, those bikes tend to follow, but a little way down the line. Santa Cruz actually offer a lifetime warranty as standard on the frame, as well as offering a lifetime bearing replacement policy. They also pride themselves in the fact that there's no funky proprietary parts used um, anywhere on the linkages or in the bearings, so finding replacements should be quick and easy. As I'm sure you've come to expect from all bike launches of late, the Santa Cruz has had that usual treatment where it's been lengthened and slackened, but in this instance, it hasn't been made any lower. When it comes to the reach of the new Nomad, if we look back to the previous model, we can see that the medium that we've got here today has actually grown by 10 mil. So that reach figure is now 450 mil. At the front of the bike, the head angle has been slackened by one degree. So in the high setting, you're talking about a head angle of 64 degrees versus a head angle of 65 degrees on the previous model. While that might not be a huge difference, if we look at the seat tube angle, that has changed quite dramatically. In fact, that's steepened by nearly four degrees. So if we look at the medium bike I've got here today, in the high setting, that seat tube angle is actually 78 degrees, which is really quite steep. The old seat tube angle would have been around about 74, 74.5 degrees. So it's, it's changed quite a lot, and that should make for a far more efficient climber. Santa Cruz are sticking with the flip chip that they use at the lower shock mount. Um, that simply just flips around, as the name suggests, and gives you two different settings, in this case high and low. That alters the head angle by just 0.3 degrees, and it's the same at the seat angle. So not a dramatic difference, but you do get four millimeters of bottom bracket adjustment. That means the BB is either gonna sit at around 340 mil or 344 mil, depending on which setting you're at. That's actually the same as the previous generation Nomad. So Santa Cruz haven't decided to just, you know, drop the bike and make it a whole lot lower as we've seen on other bikes of a similar sort of travel and wheel size. I still think there's scope to go a touch lower on the bottom bracket. But having said that, 
When I get onto how the bike rides, you'll soon find out that it still does corner incredibly well. Now, one of the biggest changes that Santa Cruz have made to the Nomad for next year is that just like on the 5010 that we saw launched earlier in 2020, the new Nomad uses proportionally sized chain stays. So that means as the frame size grows, the length of the rear sensor or the effective chain stay length grows as well. On the medium, for example, which has a reach of 450 mil, which we've already mentioned, the chain stay length is 430 mil. But if you go all the way up to an extra large, where the reach is 500 mil, the chain stay actually grows 10 mil up to 440 mil. Right, moving on to the spec. Now, as I've already said, this is the CC X01 RSV or reserve build that costs 7,799 pounds. Now for that kind of money, you'd expect top end kit and that's exactly what you get here. Starting at the front of the bike, you can see Fox's 38 fork. And in this case, it's the full blown factory version with Kashima coated legs. Now currently Santa Cruz are offering six different builds all with a carbon frame and all of which use either the RockShox Zeb or the 38 like you can see here. The Fox 38 fork you can see here has 170 mm travel. It uses the Grip2 damper and you can adjust the high and low speed compression damping as well as the high and low speed rebound damping. Now just like the front of the bike at the rear we've got Fox's X2 shock which is an air sprung unit. Now this also has plenty of adjustments so you've got high and low speed compression adjustment and high and low speed rebound adjustment. There's also a low speed compression lever which you can flick to firm the shock up when you're climbing fire roads or on tarmac. SRAM take care of the drivetrain and in this case it's their X01 Eagle system. So that's 12 gears and includes their massive 10 to 52 tooth cassette. They also provide their brakes in the shape of the code RSCs and they're specced with 200 mil rotors front and rear to give you the ultimate in stopping power. Maxis provide the tyres and in this case it's an Asagai 2.5 wide child at the front and that's in the 3C Max grip compound. At the rear we've got a Minion DHR2 that's 2.4 wide trail and that's in the 3C Max Terra compound. Interestingly, Maxxis are supplying the air sprung version of this bike with EXO plus casing tires, while they're actually putting the double down casing, so a tougher casing tire on the coil sprung version of this bike. As you'd expect on this top end offering, Santa Cruz include their reserve wheels. So carbon hoops with a 30 mil internal width, and these are built onto DT Swiss 350 hubs. Finishing touches come courtesy of Santa Cruz themselves in the shape of their Palmdale grips and their own carbon bar. And British brand Bergtech supply their Enduro Mark III stem, which is 40 mil, and it's the same size across all sizes of the bike. Before I get into the ride impressions in full, I just wanted to say that I've only had a handful of rides out on the new Nomad, just because of timing more than anything else. But where I have ridden it, it has given me a good idea about how this new bike will behave. I spent a bit of time riding on steep natural tracks um, that aren't really man-made, kind of scratched into the hillsides, so covered in roots and rocks. As well as uh, I did have a day at Bike Park Wales, which is far faster and there's loads of jumps and rock gardens and stuff like that. So that variance in terrain has given me some idea about how the new Nomad will perform. But going forwards, I am going to spend a lot more time on this bike so I can give you a full review later down the line. While the Nomad's obviously designed to excel going downhill, it still needs to get to the top. So I'm going to start by talking about the climbing. Now, under power, the shock remains really quite calm with very little in the way of suspension bob. So while you do put the power down, especially while you're seated, it doesn't move that much. So it does feel nice and efficient. And that's helped more by that super steep seat angle. What I did notice while seated and climbing up the hill was that I wasn't in the most stretched out position. That's partly down to the fact that that seat tube is so steep and that creates a relatively short, effective top tube length of just 582 mil on the medium. Then couple that with that 40 mil stem, it just means it's not the roomiest cockpit around. Like I said though, that wasn't really a big deal for me and I felt comfortable every time I was pointed up the hill. If you were looking for a roomier fit, there's no reason why you couldn't upsize to a slightly larger frame. And that's because the seat tube on the Nomad is so compact. 
I've got a 150 mil travel post here. And as you can see, I've actually still got quite a few millimeters left there that I could drop it even further down. So that means that I can probably just switch up onto a large frame without too much fuss. But for me, the medium seems to fit really well. And although I'm not as stretched out as I could be, and I have been on other bikes, I didn't feel too cramped when going up really steep hills. And I never really suffered from that front wheel lifting at all. One thing I did find really handy was that 52 tooth cog on the big SRAM cassette. Now it's gonna sound like I'm a bit of a wimp, but after a big long day at Bike Park Wales, when I was feeling really tired, I was shifting into it just to keep the pedals turning and to give my legs a bit of a break. And I did honestly really appreciate it. Obviously, once you're at the top, you've got the fun bit ahead of you and that's going downhill. From the get-go, the Nomad felt nice and natural and easy to ride. On steeper trails, I was impressed by how sensitive the fork and shock felt and surprised by the amount of traction I could get even in these really wet, damp, sticky conditions we're currently experiencing here in the UK right now. And although both the fork and shock are nice and sensitive, there's still plenty of mid-stroke support when you need it most and that means you keep in a nicely balanced position on the bike. The ride dynamic of it isn't pitching you forward and back, it stays nice and solid beneath you. On faster, rougher trails, the Nomad does feel incredibly composed, but I would say I felt a bit more feedback through the handlebars onto my hands. Now, I'm not sure that whether that was down to the carbon reserve wheels or not, but like I said, I haven't had a whole lot of time on the bike to clarify this, so I do need to experiment with suspension settings, maybe tweak my tyre pressures a little more, and maybe even swap some alloy wheels and so I can do some back-to-back -back runs just to verify all my findings. But that feel through the bar is by no means any kind of deal breaker. You can still ride really fast and hit things really hard. It just means that your hands do start to get a bit more fatigued on really long, rough runs. Now for me at least, where the new Nomad really excels is when you're slinging this bike from turn to turn. It feels like it corners on rails. It's seriously quick and will rip round a turn like you would not believe. So even though Santa Cruz have stretched the new Nomad out slightly, which makes it more composed and easier going at higher speeds, it still retains that liveliness and that fun factor that I used to love about the old bike. But drop into a jump riddled trail and this thing can be hopped, popped, launched, whipped, whatever you feel confident doing in the air, this bike is versatile enough to do it. In terms of how the new Nomad handles the really big hits, I'm pleased to say that I've had no harsh bottom outs and even when I have got out of shape, it seems to have just bounced back without any problems. I've even smashed it through some really ugly rock sections where I must admit the wheels have made some quite nasty noises, sorry Santa Cruz, um, yet they seem to have come out completely unscathed. So we'll just see what happens over time as I test this bike more as to how the whole thing holds up. Overall then, the new Nomad feels more capable downhill than its predecessor. The changes to the geometry might make it more confident and stable at high speed, but thankfully it retains that lively, poppy, fun factor of the old bike, which is what I really fell in love with last time around. Obviously, I've only had a short amount of time on it so far, so once I do get to spend a lot more quality time with the bike, I can give you a far more in-depth review later down the line. So please keep an eye out for that. So what do you guys think of the new Nomad with its changes to the geometry and suspension for 2021? Please let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe and click that bell icon so you know every time we upload a new video.